in the age of you know, the new media, increasing globalization, traveling the world many times each year, where do you see political com communication theory going and research in, in the age of increased connectedness between those various scholars? Well, I think there's going to have to be some redefinition, uh, some stepping back from the theoretical uh, apparatus that, were, that was developed in the 80s and 90s. I mean, you mentioned agenda setting, priming, and framing. Mm -hmm. Those uh, models all applied to a kind of a passive uh, uh, audience in which uh, there wasn't a great deal of selection of news sources. So people simply turned on the television and they watched the news and pretty much everything happened as a result. Today, of course, we have a much more different uh, enriched media environment in which the individual user has a lot of control over what she chooses to consume. And so I think we need to recalibrate these notions of agenda setting and priming to take into account the fact that today people who have certain political views and certain political preferences are going to gravitate to certain news organizations. And as a result, uh, they are essentially uh, suiting their own agenda to the flow of information. So in a sense, we now have a chicken and an egg problem. Uh, is it the media setting the agenda, or is it people who have particular problems that are high on their agenda selecting specific news sources? Just to give you a specific example from the United States, there's very good evidence that people who are to the right, who are conservative, uh, watching Fox News because they believe that Fox News is going to be consistent with what they believe. Mm. Would that annihilate these theories or do we need adaptation of, of the theories? Yes, that I wouldn't say that it would annihilate. <laughs> I think that's very strong. Uh, uh, it will certainly cause these theories to be uh, adjusted. I think we have to uh, assume that we are not going to see very large-scale persuasion effects because people are now able to protect themselves from exposure to inconsistent information. So instead of uh, persuasion, I would guess that we're going to see a lot of reinforcement, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, sort of strengthening of prior beliefs. On, I think agenda setting is pretty immune to that kind of notion because uh, it's more of a cold effect. It's not too affective. So if there's a lot of news about, a, if there's a new stock market uh, collapse and it generates a huge amount of news coverage, then clearly that will be on the agenda, no matter what you believe about it. Uh, and where would you see that transnationality factoring in to the political communication, education, curricula? Well, I think now people can tune into news sources uh, the world over. Uh, and so you could have a Spanish undergraduate who wished to do a study on the BBC or comparing the public broadcaster in Spain with the public broadcaster in Britain. It's now this student can on his own obtain the news coverage in Britain, uh, perform a simple content analysis on the British news coverage, compare that with what's happening in Spain in, in the Spanish broadcast media, and they right away you have a small a two-country comparative study that is available to an undergraduate. Mm -hmm. I think that's a remarkable uh, development and 20 years ago we would never have imagined this possible. And would you say then that within the curricula, would you say in departments and, and universities should have either courses or some other institutional means of encouraging such research? Very much so, very much so. My class, my undergraduate class on the press and the political process requires the students to carry out an independent research project in which they actually have to track news coverage in at least two different countries. Uh, but that's very easy to do now. Uh, so it's, uh, it's something that you don't have to leave the comfort of your own apartment. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So with all these developments that have been taking place with the availability of international content and the facility with which we can conduct comparative research, have you personally um, been more engaged in some kind of international collaborations that have stemmed from these facilities offered to us now? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, not only uh, am I engaging in comparative research, but uh, the research is explicitly designed around uh, 
delivery of news. Mm -hmm. uh, we are now able to track news delivery on a 24-hour basis in countries across the world. And in addition, we're able to track the impact of news on the audience. Uh, so that's a different development which has to do with the uh, uh, availability of low-cost national surveys, uh, web-based surveys. Uh, so it's no longer a very pricey prospect. Uh, even junior faculty members who don't have large research budgets can afford to do a national sample survey in several countries. Mm -hmm. and, and the last question, um, from your own perspective, as a person who is a very well-established scholar in a very well-established American university, what are the motivations that would push you personally towards reaching out to different countries, different continents to do collaborative work? Because from the perspective of many European scholars or, or scholars based outside of the US in general, one of the motivations is such, it could be the visibility within the American academia, which is still, as we can argue or, or debate, which is still kind of the dominant paradigm that's, um, that sets the agenda of political communication. So from the perspective of a very well-established scholar, what are the motivations for reaching out and, and conducting co collaborative yeah. research? Well, it's a very simple motivation. Uh, the motivation to move beyond a one-shot case study design. For the last 30 or 40 years, American communication scholars have been concentrating on one case, a single case, the United States. And they are absolutely clueless about whether the findings that are based on a single case can be generalized to other contexts, to other cultural milieus. And so it's long overdue, it seems to me, that we develop an explicitly cross-national research agenda for political communication. And so one of the motivations uh, that prompted me to attend this meeting mm -hmm. is the hope that I can uh, develop some contacts with people who have similar research interests mm -hmm. so that we can put together a fairly large team of scholars, perhaps extending as to as many as 25 different countries, let us say, mm -hmm. which will make possible some truly interesting uh, study designs concerning the impact of news on audiences on a worldwide mm -hmm. as opposed to a local or regional basis. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And who knows then the, the theories that have been found and established in the U.S. sociopolitical context may actually turn out to be U.S. theories. And yeah, they absolutely. The they might be completely invalid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. My Great. pleasure. My pleasure.